Conover here, coming to you from the middle of the rainforest in New Zealand. I'm here in New Zealand for only five days working on a partnership with American Airlines. And my mission in this video is simple. I am scouting out the best locations on the North Island to film a full send travel series sometime in the spring or the fall if you're in the Southern Hemisphere in 2019. Without any ado, this is Traveling to New Zealand. You're going to start your trip on the North Island in the most populated city in the country. Number one on my list is Auckland. In a country where there are more sheep than people, Auckland is a vibrant, bustling cityscape. It felt like Tokyo, San Francisco, and Seattle all mixed into one based around two large harbors and in the center of the city, the iconic Sky Tower. For the first activity on my list, we are going to the top of this guy right here. Skywalk Auckland is the best way to get a full 360 degree panoramic view of the city. Awesome, we're currently here in the beautiful city of Auckland, 192 meters up on the Sky Tower. No handrail or anything, you're just secured in with a harness. I'm not afraid of heights, but when you leave the gated area, it's the ultimate shot of adrenaline and it's guaranteed to kick the jet lag. I'm joined on this trip by my manager, Jared, who, well, Jared's deathly afraid of heights, but he was a champ and went out on the skywalk anyway. And for the more daring, there's the sky jump, which is a base jump by wire off the sky tower. 1,000% worth it. Auckland is known as the city of sales, with more boats per capita than anywhere else in the world. With that said, I recommend learning how to sail in an authentic America's Cup yacht. It's very hands-on, you're working those grinders to hoist the mainsail, and if you're lucky, you might even see a pot of dolphin riding the wave in the bow, or maybe someone doing a full send bungee off the harbor bridge, and of course, stunning views of Auckland from the water. Leaving the bustling city life of Auckland, I drove two hours south through the lush countryside, Next up on my list is the sleepy surf town of Raglan. Now Raglan is at the top of every surfer's bucket list. The peeling left hand break is said to be one of the longest rides in the world. Ever since I was a kid, I have dreamed of surfing perfect left hand bombs at Raglan. Uh, as you can see though, it is a stormy day. Onshore winds, kind of chop and slop out there. So we will see if I get the surf it or if I just stand here like a sad, wet dog in the rain. Eric Conover, reporting from Raglan. Wet, cold, and I'm not gonna lie, a bit defeated, I did not get to surf Raglan. On a positive note, I stayed at this eco-friendly resort called Soulscape. The place had an on-site kitchen with fresh produce from the garden on location. The most interesting part were the accommodations, consisting of old train carts refurbished as rooms, and they had these dwellings that they called Earth Domes. Pretty cool stuff. Very sustainable and conscious of the environment. I highly recommend it. Uh, I wish you could see it though in its full glory with a blue sky, but sometimes life isn't all blue skies. They say here in New Zealand, you can experience all four seasons in one day. It's now the next morning and we have a beautiful sunny sky. The rain has stopped, the wind has kind of died down. Pause that, you know how I said four seasons in one day? Welcome to New Zealand. A short 15 minute drive from Ragland through the lush rainforest brings us to the next location on my list, Bridal Veil vale Falls. The spectacular 55 meter plunge waterfall is only a short 10 minute hike from the road through the bush lined with silver ferns all over the forest floor. The falls have multiple vantage points, one at the very top and the other at the bottom of the falls. First impressions, I didn't realize how lush the rainforest was here in New Zealand. It really reminds me of Kilimanjaro. Earlier this year, I was in Tanzania and the base of Kilimanjaro is a rainforest. It's very similar to that. I highly recommend this short trip from Raglan for some relaxation in nature and of course, the iconic Instagram shot. What is any trip to New Zealand without visiting the Shire? Next on my list is the Hobbit movie set. Growing up, I was a massive fan of the Lord of the Rings and to see this movie set in person, in real life, it's kind of like a childhood dream come true just to see the level of detail at this place. There are 44 hobbit holes dug into the hillside. The film set covers 12 acres of pastures 
and is an actual working farm covered in sheep and tons of little lambs roaming around the property. One piece of advice I have, when you come here, you should know in advance that this is a major tourist destination for the country of New Zealand. Our tour guide Luke was saying that it's more popular now, 20 years after the film, than when it was first opened to the public as a tourist destination. It's actually pretty packed right now, but in no way will that stop you from stepping back into Middle Earth. So New Zealand is a geothermal wonderland and has a spectacular showcase of colorful and unique geothermal attractions sculpted by thousands of years of volcanic activity. I recommend checking out Waiotapu. I have never seen anything like this in nature. They don't add any coloring to this. There's nothing artificial about this. That color you are actually seeing is how it is in nature. It looks like a radioactive dump site, but the neon water gets its color from the deposits of sulfur that rise to the surface and float on top. The main attraction at Waiotapu is the Champagne Pool. It is about 74 degrees Celsius, and it's said that it goes down to the Earth's crust. The reason for the crazy Crazy colors is from the minerals, which are gold, silver, and arsenic, and a little bit of mercury. Not that I'm any geologist or anything. All this information is actually on the nice pamphlet that they give you when you walk in here. But it sounds a lot better when I read it off to you. After Waiotapu, head on over to Hell's Gate. That is right, Hell's Gate, which is Rotorua's most active geothermal area with erupting waters, pools of boiling mud, the largest hot waterfall in the southern hemisphere, and of course, the mud volcano. Could you imagine being the first human to be walking through the bush, then all of a sudden, you come across this. For over 700 years, the Maori people have regarded Hell's Gate as a, a place of healing. So I came here to take a geothermal mud bath to cleanse my sins. This is mineral enriched geothermal mud. You see this, Jared? Get a close up of that. It's very fine. It's like a, uh, a silt almost. You can see it on my hands. Kind of smells sulfury. This is where the geothermal water is pumped in to these man made pools. The mud is collected from Sulfur Lake and then is transported into these metal holding containers where it's then heated up by the water. The mud is just fun to play with. I mean, it is such a fine texture. It's almost like a, uh, like a stress ball. You keep this on for 20 minutes and I can already feel after the first five minutes that the mud kind of just relaxes you. I highly recommend if you are in Rotorua, come to Hell's Gate, take a nice long mud bath, kick back, and just enjoy the best that New Zealand has to offer. The absolute undisputed highlight of this location scouting trip was whitewater rafting. So the world is a very small place. I learned how to whitewater kayak two years ago in Voss, Norway from a guy named Jamie Sutton. And by some crazy serendipity, his brother, former world champion and madman Sam Sutton, owner of Rotorua Rafting, took Jared and I out for one hell of an adventure. We sent it down the highest commercially rafted waterfall in the world. So this is 21 feet. So yeah, the highest commercial raft and waterfall in the world. We're about to check it out. Probably go upside down, see some fish. Are you ready? Yeah! Are you ready? Yeah! yeah! And get down! You will feel high on life after the plunge. You might fall out of the raft unexpectedly like Jared did. <laughs> Let's do this. Sam is telling us we're gonna now swim through the next raft. Yeah, we're gonna swim a waterfall here. Watch the boys get a little bit of downtime and uh, basically just get to watch the fear in their eyes. So I'll give you a whistle when I'm ready. Here we go. And now this is perfectly safe. I have a life vest on. I have a helmet. I'm protected. But out of all the incredible locations in this video, rafting the falls is the absolute must. And just like that, our scouting trip is over. If you want to see a full send, I'm talking three, four weeks in New Zealand, comment down below, more New Zealand. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe for more high quality travel content. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Yo!